Okay, just wanted to show you guys the 70 millimeter in motion. So this is what is called a platter system. It's what the film sits on. You can work with 35 millimeter or 70 millimeter film. It pulls from the center. That core widens, makes its way to the projector and then comes back. So the way that the platter knows how fast to spin is that control arm that the film goes between. If it starts pulling that to the left, it spins faster. And if it starts pulling to the right, then it spins slower. And then for this one, the take up side, this is the take up arm here. So if this starts increasing tension and pulls that arm to the left, it tells us to slow down. And if it goes to the right, it's to speed up. If for some reason it loses a lot of tension really fast, then this will go all the way to the right and it will shut everything down. So here's the film going to the projector. You can actually see every frame. There's Oppenheimer there. You can see it making its way up. We'll follow it over. And here's the film making its way back. So same frames that you just saw up above, but they're on the bottom. And you can see the audio is that black stripe on now the right side that it reads that off of, sends the time code to what's called a DTS, and synchronizes it to the film. This is a cooling pump, it cools the gate of the projector that the film goes through because if that gate gets too hot it can cause the film to warp, it can also cause focus issues. So we'll make our way over here. This is the console made by Christie. Christie still makes projectors. This one is from the late 90s. So that's our bulb amperage. DC power switch. You can focus the bulb and move it so that it fills the screen. This controls the speed of the projector. Uh, the jog switch is to slowly move the film through after threading to make sure everything is moving through as it should. Start starts it at full speed. Stop obviously stops it. And then here's all our switches. We've got the masking switch for the curtains around the screen, exhaust, console automation, the uh, outlet, the electrical outlet that's on the other side, the pump's plugged into the projector, and then the power supply for the light. And here is the projector. You can see the exhaust, a lot of heat coming out of there. The film makes its way down with these particle transfer rollers. They pull dust and dirt off of the film. This reads the sound code off of the film, so the DTS. So it's a laser that shines through it. There's the gate. The light shines through. It's kind of like the heart of the projector. There's the aperture plate, that glass thing there. That's what shapes the image on the screen. There's the shutter because if it doesn't block light while the film is moving, it will just look like a blur on the screen. So that's uh, very important to have the shutter. Bottom loop, there's the intermittent. So it doesn't look like it's moving, but it is. Um, it's stopping and starting 24 times a second. There's the fail-safe. If tension becomes too low, those arms will drop down and it'll shut everything off. And there's the return roller back to the platter. Here is the audio rack. 
I have the monitor volume up so I can hear what is being played in the auditorium. If I don't hear anything, then I know there's no audio in the auditorium. How about that? This is the DTS. This is where the file, the audio file is. So it's synchronizing the code to the film from that laser device that I showed you. So we're on reel three, 10 minutes into reel three, and it's synchronizing the sound to the film. So the audio is coming from here and then being fed into the audio processor and then out all the speakers on all these different amps. 